Um, okay, so this is the very first game of Hidden Cup 4 of 2021. So, welcome everyone. We have Bad Koala in the blue as Celts against Tim in the red as Franks. Um, so, this is being played on a Hidden Cup 4 version of Arabia, so we'll just kind of have a look to see how that compares to normal one. Uh, Bad Koala here has some nice backwood lines, safe berries, so a very good position for him. Uh, Boars towards the back of his base should make it a little bit harder for laming. Um, in terms of walling off, his second and third gold are quite far away from his TC, um, but maybe with some walls or maybe he'll need military presence to be able to uh, expand to them later on. Um, but his woodlands, whilst small, give him an opportunity to wall around. Um, as Celts, I would expect to see some sort of drush, maybe man-at-arms coming in from him. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that as we go on. Over at Tim's base, again, two back balls. Uh, his main stone is a bit safer than Bad Koala's, but Koala could wall across to it. So um, Tim has his main gold in a securable position as well um, but the berries look slightly exposed these the map seems relatively open whilst giving them options for wood lines um, so it'll be interesting to see how they wall I think Tim is known for his walling so um, I think he will make sure that happens and yeah low have I agree actually the way that like the stone and golds out on this side is very reminiscent of this main gold there main gold there they, they are very very similar you're right hey matox welcome to the stream um so tim is the franks three on wood so it will be a scouts opening for him uh bad koala it's gone to four on wood as celts you can kind of get away with three for uh um standard drush slash man at arms approach um hasn't gone to berries yet but maybe a little bit early though yeah. could be on their way now yeah so he's gonna drop a couple of houses uh interesting so koala looks to be walling into his tc for the time being um so he's just gonna secure this small area for now uh he's pushing his deer as well tim out to berries now And Tim also pushing in some deer. Yeah. So, four on berries for Tim. Possibly adding a fifth to utilize the Frank's uh, faster collection from berries bonus. And that looks to be... Uh... Hey, Zealous. Slam versus Slam. <laughs> Dear push, yeah. <laughs> um, if you are a slam fan, because you're using what I presume is a slam emote, you are. Um, I will be casting slam versus doubt this afternoon in the Masters of Socotra, uh for anyone that's interested. Uh, so feel free to stick around until then, or pop back later on. Uh, so Tim, uh, Tim hasn't taken his second ball yet. I suppose he's pushed all his deer in. He knows where it is. So will I be trusting Trout versus Elos later on too? <laughs> I hadn't. I didn't have plans to. Umatruta. What time are you two playing? So both now trying to scout their opponents. Koala's going exactly the right direction. Uh, Lohab, I don't know what you're on about. I'm an excellent uh, expert. Dear uh, Ball Laura, uh, like uh, MBL has learned everything from me. Um, definitely, definitely not true. <laughs> okay, so did Koala spot that on the way past? I wasn't watching. Uh, no, nope, hasn't seen these there. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, it's fine, Yeki. I have no issue with it. Just think, with that ball, we might have won. Uh, yeah, A10, that, that was what was missing from our gameplay. That one ball would have made all of the difference. 
Sorry, Atten. Atten. Yeah. What does that sound so chill? <laughs> Lohab, was the editing done by me? Okay, so... Koala has walled into his TC, as we said. Uh, but he's going up to his gold still, so it's going to be Man at Arms. Um, might even look to secure this with a tower uh, in Feudal Age. Whereas Tim is still walling around to his TC. Um, walled around his berries, but it's completely open on the right still. Um, and again, looks to be walling up to the TC here. So he will be relying on military presence to be able to secure his map a bit more. Okay, so Tim is up to Feudal Age first, 20 pop. So instantly dropping the stables, so it'll be a scouts build. Uh, Koala taking the fight against... Uh, Tim taking the fight against Koala before Koala's Feudal Age, so it has slight advantage for Tim's scout. Uh, but now with the Drush there, he can't engage. And Tim wisely abandons the whole of the right hand side of his map that's a huge loss for franks no access to a very a, a large amount of very fast food income for them uh man at arms now in so tim is just going to secure around his uh wood lines for the time being he's got enough food to add a few scouts added a few farms um feeling secure enough to go back out to the berries now Uh, so, Tim's going to try and mass up a few scouts before he takes the engagement here. I equal numbers, Man at Arms win versus scouts. Uh, even against Frank scouts, I think. So, Tim's going to make sure he's got one or two extra before he takes that fight. And at home, Koala's added an archery range, gone for a defensive spear, and now starting to add archers. A little bit low on food income. Oh, he got housed, so he's researching Town Watch. Where are they going? Is this a tower? Okay, so Tim is going to go forward with uh, some of his villagers and looks like he might be dropping a tower on the gold. He knows the villas are there. They're going on an adventure, exactly. <laughs> so he gets one vill pick, manages to escape without losing any scouts. That's quite impressive. Oh, it's an archery range. Okay, so this will be for a few skirmishers, presumably. A um, little bit risky going for it right in the center of the map. You can't really... It doesn't do much of either. It doesn't do much defensively. It doesn't do as much aggressively. And Koala looked like he was going across to see it. He doesn't. So that is still an unknown for him. Koala housed again. He's just managed to find the house, and he's going to wall round to his main gold now. Uh, Koala might as well have kept the man at arms at Tim's base. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. They could have done kept this open, come back here. I didn't think they achieved too much in going back. So, is it going? Where's the tower going to go? Just there. So, koala won't know it's coming up um, until it's shooting at his villagers. Oh no, he sees it. He, see, he got housed, so he had to get town watch. Uh, but he's not reacting to this because he's too busy trying to micro at the front. Uh, yeah, Shazam, you're right. Because of town watch, he can see it. But even still, it takes... Yeah. It's going to deny the archery range? No, archery range will go up. Did he carry on? Oh, interesting. Okay. So Tim has gone to stone, so he can now continue his towers. And Koala's going to have to go out to the right-hand side to be able to access gold now. His secondary stone is very, very far away from his TC. Um, so this is kind of the only one he's safely able to take at this point. 
<laughs> yeah, Shazam. I think we all have. Um, I mean, this bit's walled, but it's still completely open into Tim's base. Uh, might be worthwhile Koala dropping a defensive tower in this sort of region at some point. Um, maybe right up against the gold should protect the gold and most of the wood. <laughs> and this tower, a little bit micro, take, brings back the weak villager. No, Tim bails on that one. Uh, it, honestly, he doesn't need that tower to go up. It doesn't achieve as much. It denies a little bit of farming space, but nothing too extraordinary. Um, Tim coming back with his scouts, archers and skirmishers. Uh, should clean up that army now. And adding a blacksmith forward. Tim, Tim's TC completely idle. Is he just trying to bank resources to go up or is he just a bit distracted? So this army, really terrible engagement for Tim. I, I, I thought that was an easy cleanup. Um, but instead, I, I, I completely neglected this fight happening because I thought it was easy cleanup for for Tim. May by the look of the number of red there and no blue, I wonder whether uh, Tim had some units on uh, no attack stance. Scouts were half dead. Yeah, um, but there was enough of them, and it was the. Uh, archers and skirms that should have cleaned up the spearmen. So, like, there's, there's still two spearmen there. He didn't lose any of them. Um, like, losing the army he did in exchange for what? Two archers, a spearman, and a man at arms. Um, not an ideal trade. So, there we go. We've got a tower on the golden wood line. It will. There is just one archer there, so it will idle a little bit. Uh, Tim is coming home with his military, uh, but he's taking the gold in uh, Koala's base. Koala has expanded out to the right hand side. He has gold uh, stone access, and he's going out to gold as well. Not the best of mining camps, but he'll be okay. And there's your micro nets. The Celts man at arms being able to chase down archers is so awkward. Okay, so now it gets cleaned up. And <laughs> Tim, I did say before this set, is known for his walls. He is stonewall in that right hand side. That's what we all know and love. Koala is. Just waiting for the food. He has enough. He's on his way to Castle Edge. Tim could do with dropping a market if he hasn't already. There it is. He's trying to rush it down. <laughs> Debated. Uh, yeah, so Tim is now waiting for the resources to be able to go up. Uh, should be able to buy his way up. The scout's trying to come in and disrupt the gold on the right. Hey, Glorious. <laughs> Are you surprised to see me on this early? Don't worry, mate. There'll be there'll be a vod, and there might even be a uh, YouTube video for this, so you can catch up all of that later. Exclamation mark YouTube in the chat. Go full sellout. <laughs> okay, so forty percent lead to Castle Edge for Koala. You can come back in four hours. Uh, you you can come back in four hours. I'll probably be going with the second set. Uh, maybe might have finished by then. Um, we got Kelsey Towers. Uh, they do a bit. Good stream though. See you for. Okay, Glorious. I will still be on. Um, it likely will be around the end of ACCM versus the Bloodless by then. Um, but I am planning to stick around for Doubt versus Slam this evening. So, catch you later. <clears throat> but again, even. So, obviously. Koala can go for a, a mangonel or two and cleans this up very, very quickly. This 
military on the right, it's a little bit of a mistake going forward, maybe. Because um, they can just go and sit under the tower. Uh, not enough, maybe. Skirmishers don't really want to be sat there. <coughs> um, but if Koala chooses to try and clear this up with Siege, Tim should be pretty happy with that, because it means that the Siege Workshop is at home. That that is the ideal. <laughs> Aero snipes in the chat. Um, that's the ideal scenario where um, Celt Siege is having to stay at home to clear up this mess um, before going forward to try and put any pressure on. <clears throat> I know Theo's selfless act. I don't know what Gloria's is playing at. In fairness, I know Gloria's works in a shop, so it's a bit difficult to do retail and watch Twitch at the same time. Sorry, I did... I hope I muted myself for coughing. Um, I hope that didn't just damage your ears. Uh, so, army's just passing there. A couple of pickoffs here for Tim. Um, Tim would be fairly happy with that trade, actually taking it down a few crossbowmen for the loss of a few archers and skirmishers that he wasn't upgrading anyway. Uh, he already had fletching, but that helps his towers as much as anything else. And Tim was trying to build a castle here. It's been denied by crossbows and a mangonel. With this presence at the front, it's almost worth... Tim getting guard tower and if Tim can dive on this with his knights cleans this up that tower that castle will go up 63% and that's what, exactly what he's doing he's ignoring the army <laughs> you called it trout so now we can go onto the castle the Crossbows are having to deal with the knights. They can't engage versus the uh, castle builders yet. Not enough to clean. It, it, it doesn't... The military for Tim doesn't need to clean. It just needs to distract to get that castle up. Because that's now a huge position for him. And now that those knights can go and raid the gold on the right hand side... Uh, they have just plus one defense for now, so wait for the second uh, defense upgrade and they can come back and dive on the gold miners, no problem. Koala recognizes that and sends all his army across to protect it. At home, Tim is on just two TCs, but he's expanding, securing his additional golds at the same time. This is Draken. Just one TC, second one going up now for... Koala doing exactly the same. Securing. And Tim is looping around with his knights. He doesn't know this TC is going up, otherwise he would be able to deny that. Uh, maybe not with the military presence there. He only one defense still. Hasn't researched the second one. Um, but there's now a forward siege workshop for Tim. <clears throat> feels fairly rough for um, fairly rough for Koala he stayed on stone so maybe he's looking to drop a castle over this side to try and protect the right hand side of his base or maybe put it in a more defensive position to stop this push um, it, hmm. we do have a ram out now for Tim so he's going to try and just break through the buildings that are here uh, his knights will be able to then come in and raid no problem uh, it's going to be a castle drop from Koala where is he putting it so these knights on the right hand side have done nothing. There's now no villagers left. Um, but there's a group on the left that's trying to break in. <clears throat> Koala researched pikemen upgrades. Uh, no, no other upgrades on them at the moment. 
So he's going forward with pikes and crossbows. That castle should go up with the amount of villagers he sent on it and the amount of military he's got to defend. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't achieve too much. Maybe as a staging post for pushing onto this gold. <laughs> That's a near base trade. Gets a convert. There's a monk sat amongst the and so it's going to be a defensive castle here for Tim. While all of the military forwards, <clears throat> Tim diving in, knights everywhere through Koala's economy. And yet, yeah, well and truly over. Uh, great map awareness from Tim to recognise the uh, exposed gold at the front there. Um, I did say when I was scouting the maps that I'd have liked a preemptive tower from Koala. Uh, it's always awkward building a tower before your opponent because they can just come from a different angle. Uh, but the way he'd walled, it felt that a tower on that hill would have done a really good job of securing it. Um, <clears throat> but good, good awareness and adaptation from Tim allows him to take a one game lead. Where's that one? Hey, Sapper. Welcome back. Oh, you're on mute. Oh, there's no point in me saying hello. Yeki, can you say hello to Sapper for me? Okay, so... Solid win in game one for Tim. Okay, let's try and find game two. Uh, that one in game. Hate both baked beans and Weetabix. Fair enough. I, I like I like Weetabix. Um, tend to eat them with raisins. <clears throat> okay, so we have game two of the qualifiers for Hidden Cup four between Bad Koala and Tim, with Koala in the blue as Malay against Tim in the red as Slavs, and this is Bay. Um, so, let's change the orientation this year? Or I wonder if it's a more random generation. Um, so, features of this map, you have a... Um, um, a large lake in the centre uh, with... <laughs> sorry, you're right, it is pants. The map is shaped like pants. Um, yeah, so you've got plenty of fish in the centre, so often we will see people come out and dock. Um, other than that, you have deer dotted around the map, so uh, plenty of food that can be uh, taken advantage of. Much closer wood lines than the previous map, um, so opportunities to wall. Uh, but it's difficult to wall to the water because of the amphibious terrain. You can wall up to it, but if you, even if you have a dock here, there is still a gap that you can walk along. Um, I'm doing my achievements for the event in the background. <laughs> Just good work, Francesco. Good work. I guess it wants you to do easiest or higher to get the first one. Uh, standard or higher to get the next one and so on so like you could play extreme five times and get all of the achievements I don't know I, d I don't I don't don't do too many of the achievements there there's one per day oh okay so you'll do one each day the extreme eye is not very impressive challenge uh, no probably not it's a little bit better now than it was when the first came out um, but for people new to the game, it, it presents a challenge for new players. Um, so I think it's a good benchmark to try and get... I think if you can beat Extreme Eye, it'll put you 1100-ish. Yeah, Zealous. Agreed. But I think if you can beat Extreme AI consistently, it puts you in the top half of players on the ranked ladder. I could be wrong. Uh, other people may have different experiences, but that is what I feel. 
I might push it to 1200 depending on how much you choose it. Uh, yeah, that's very true. If you don't go forward with towers, uh, t towers are completely different altogether. Um, but the, yeah, if, if you let it get to late game, I think it goes even a little bit higher. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying, Trout. If it goes to um, the late game, I'd, I'd say 13, 1400. Uh, that's a booming imperial Yeah, agreed. Uh, yes, Yeki, uh, black pudding is uh, basically a blood sausage, uh, and it is an amazing component of breakfast. Uh, so we have a three mil drush coming from Tim. Uh, Theo, I, I don't, I don't know the exact kind of ranges. I, I base Extreme AI on what my ranking was when I first started beating it consistently. So yeah, I, I don't, I don't have uh, like rating equivalencies. No, that's very true, and that is a very uh, that's a very limiting factor if you're trying to improve at uh, like the online play. It's a very different, very different matchup. Okay, so Koala has built a dock and is walling into the wood line, but it does leave gaps, and. Tim is on his way forward with his rush. Idle TC behind this. So, slight mistakes there. And both players researching Loom. Koala's added a few um, fish and ships. That was super different. Yeah. So, he, I, a little bit of idle time as TC manages to click up. Uh, he'll be up super fast because Malay have a quicker uptime. Like 66% of the time, is it? Um, Tim, a little bit misjudged. Just got Loom, but is still on his uh, Dark Age. Still adding villagers. Um taking quite a few hits from the TC there the Drush is going to get chased away by two villagers <laughs> yeah like the way that they'll have just a few units and just constantly move them away every time you come forward <clears throat> so Koala Trapping in that army. Uh, no barracks at the moment. Golden house. So just staying on water. Just getting eco upgrades. Uh, but is this just a fast feudal to get the economy rolling? So, and Tim is coming forward with more militia and a lot of villagers because the only stone koala has access to is there um so <laughs> interesting tim Possibly recognizing Koala is already in feudal, adds a demo, so doesn't risk running past with his villagers. Um, but this army should break. Th this army, these villagers should break in, and that will deny Koala's stone access. Um, there are extra stone piles dotted around the map. Tim does know that there is a villager outside. Francesco, you can now equip all bills. Nice. Imagine that Tim is slower to be walled. <laughs> Dropping a forward archery range. Uh, Koala adding a defensive one. I, d I 
can't recall if there is a Civ draft at this stage. I kind of presume there is. That feels a little bit ballsy to go there. Data, thank you very much for the sub. Welcome. HC for Absolutely. That means I'm into D one year almost. Nice. I do remember uh, like when I was first getting the whole community started up um, and I came across Data in one of the communities and he, he joined my Discord um, and then I met, ended up queuing against him on the ladder fairly shortly afterwards. Um, I think he was the first person to like recognise my name. Which is cool. Hey Paquita! So, Galley coming across for Koala. That gives him some really good military presence around here, but the tower goes up. Um, that will make the fish and ships a little bit harder to collect. Now, about D during Hunger 3, during Hunger Sword, after you face five in the finals, and then so you go, nice. Oh, yeah, I agree, Shazam. I, I don't get. Uh, yes, Yaki, I do. Um, Right, I, I'm, that's something I'm rubbish at. I need to finish a th thought and a comment before I move on to a new one. Um, so, let's go with Slavs seeming weird. Yeah, Slavs and Malay. I like Malay. I kind of understand. Um, I, don't, I don't feel they have as big an advantage here. Um, I, I feel the uh, an out-and-out... <laughs> Halo hub. Uh, yeah, Koala has Malay here. I just don't think Malay do what they do on this map as well as maybe even Italians. Um, particularly with Italians as they are now. Uh, Tim recognising that that tower is not going to go up. He just needed to to like chain them up and come in. Um Bad Koala will smash. I hope so, Lohab. I hope to have uh, multiple games in this set. Um, right, next thing. Yeki, ch need to fix channel points. Uh, yes, I do need to fix the channel points. They have... They need to be updated since we had the 12-hour stream. I don't quite know what I want them to be, so I'm open to suggestions um, from the audience and from the discord so maybe we can do a section in the feedback and suggestions bit of the discord about um, what to see <laughs> in my channel points rewards um, exactly lohab thank you very much love the sellout <clears throat> uh, evil mundo got the in december 2019 i believe yeah I, I was i was a bit later i was probably might well have been hidden cup sort of time for me as well data um, Tim just trading off his army to try and get that tower up now going to try and run away the weak villager loses it uh, but the tower does go up and so he can continue chaining them I still don't feel that they're doing too much there I, it, it, look, it feels like he's trying to loop around the side of the gold to try and deny that um, Koala has idled his he's just waiting for the market to be able to buy his way up um, right, what else did I miss? I want pick sieve enabled. Uh, yeah, I, I can, I can have a pick sieve. That seems a reasonable one. Uh, Atten, if you're not already, join the Discord, drop it in the, uh, suggestion, feedback and suggestions section. Um, so I can remember to do it after the stream, because seven, eight hours from now, I can't guarantee I'll remember. Um... Great bird order for my koala. Cast my game one versus one me. Yeah, yeah, they are very much one well, one challenge has to be in there too. <laughs> yeah, that's true, LG. Um Yeah, I mean I don't know what I, I I just don't feel it's done as much. Tim feels quite a long way behind. Um nowhere near going up. Koala now reaches um, Castle Edge, 
garrison this tower should go down to this one uh, we just hear a stable being built forward stables so he's just going to ignore it <clears throat> and the elephants are going to come and attack <laughs> yeah data this is pants uh, I I feel like I've seen the map oriented this way around before, um, but I think, as, as you say, in Hidden Cup 3, it was oriented, uh, what, a 90 degree rotation? No real counter to any Russian fuel edge. And he's just massing up his elephants before he goes. Uh, adding a seed workshop. Does Tim see any of this? Nope. No idea that it's coming. Wow. Doesn't see that it's coming, but in reality, he probably should. I'd like to see Koala drop a dock on this side. Okay, so Tim is now on his way up. Um, looks to be expanding for the hunt around the map. So, again, this... It's a weird map to do this on because you're Slavs, you want farms. Farms are excellent. Uh, yeah, Mundo, I agree. Like having different orientations just means that you need to send your scout just to check. Um, hopefully this map can be rotated full 360. So the water could be up here, over this side, over here, or over here, so that they have to actually check. Um, this could be... Could Castle Age be stopped? Yeah, he knows. The elephants were a great play. Uh, Koala doing exactly enough with his two towers to stop the six, seven, what, eight towers that uh, Tim tried. And Koala did all that without mining any stones. We just bought his second one. Um, it Very nice defense from Koala. I, I still don't get the Slavs pick to try towers on this map. Like... He's going out taking the hunt in two different places when Slavs have amazing farm eco. Um, and they they do towers generically. Like, I don't get it. Um, but we shall progress. Um, is the map pool available somewhere? Uh, Data, yes, it is. It's in the um, AOE zone announcement. Maybe I can get a link to that in the channel. Um, I will find that in between games, actually. Cool. Anything of note? Not, no, nothing particularly to. Um, yeah, Mundo, the the fishing ships did help. Um, they weren't too efficient in the end because like, they're over here. They're actually idle now, I think. Um, but I think it was more down to. Like having 13 on gold, keeping that going. <laughs> yeah, Thea, sorry. What else did I miss? Love the cup games. Hope it's in the map pool. I believe. I don't think cup is in the map pool for the qualifiers, um, but I'm expecting it to be for the main event. Right, in game. That, that, that. Cool. We are back. Done. Admin sorted. Not going to get in trouble with T90 for not having the thing displayed. Okay, so we have game three of the Hidden Cup four qualifiers between Bad Koala in the blue as Italians against Tim in the red as Japanese. And again, uh, the Hidden Cup uh, islands map has the three deleted archery ranges on the neutral island. Uh, I, like, I like the little bits of... Uh, humor and in jokes that are included in things like that um <laughs> Atten, i don't have a winter olympics command um there was just too much about that tournament to be able to include into commands 
<laughs> Shut up. Okay, okay, I'm up with everything. Okay, so we're going to have a fairly slow start here. Um, both players will likely push in their deer. Um, this is actually an issue that I did see someone mention about the Hidden Cup Four Islands. Um, so Koala has a fairly straightforward push here with his deer. He needs to move the sheep out of the way. They'll probably get snagged on the boar and run the wrong way. Um, but on the other sides... Tim has to push all the way around this wood line to be able to get them in. Uh, it's just... I, I, I get having random elements to it, but it is a bit awkward. Um, and would just seem to be a bit fairer if they both had... E either both the other side of a wood line or both in a straight line. I don't know how that can be scripted. That's something way beyond my skill set. Um... Anyway, um, other things to note, um, wood seems to be fairly even in terms of the amounts each player has. Uh, this all feels rangeable from the water, which is not ideal. Um, actually, both islands feel very, very thin. Is it just me or is that the case? Is this just a random gen that that has happened on? <clears throat> so Tim going for a back dock Shazam there may well have been but I haven't seen it um, oh I'm going to find it now there it appears to be who is this this is Tim versus Koala Oh, King Boo, love that. Can you drop that as a command for me? Cool. I have it. <clears throat> Alright, Boo, you're almost, like, proving that you deserve to be a mod, like... Careful, Atten is here from GB Discord. He'll he'll be telling people that you're doing helpful stuff. <laughs> kind of would see Japanese players on this map, considering the amount of hybrid maps. Um, yes. Uh, so looking at the draft, um, I actually I realised I'm a little bit behind, so I'm just going to fast forward because it's Dark Age on islands. Not much is happening. Um, so looking at the draft, we've had. Celts played and lost. Malay played and won. Franks played and won. And Slavs played and lost. Okay. Um. <laughs> Thank you, Lohab. Thank you, Boo, for your contributions as well. I'm very, very grateful for my mod support. Uh, so we have a landing from Tim. So that's why Tim is going for... Uh, I'll, I'll keep it on slightly fast speed. Um, he's gone for Japanese because they're... <laughs> Tim is going for towers. Of course Tim is going for towers. Um, if, like, I don't get why you'd stonewall this side but not this side. Now I go back to someone's jokes. <laughs> and that makes sense with the back dock as well. Um, it means... Am I up to live gameplay? I am. Cool. Um, it means that this fish and ship will be... A little bit safer and koala is still investing into uh navy it's gone for two docks people high five in the face which <laughs> that seems completely reasonable theo why why in particular is that is that work related so the uh, tower coming from tim again this will deny stone there tim is heavy on stone so um mundo yeah i i agree in terms of the out and out land presence malians would be slightly better you can get the fish out earlier um but having the japanese fishing ships i think is quite handy uh, and yeah the 
the towers will be better but only only really late on maybe maybe the extra attack on the man at arms is helpful um, but he's not continued that investment yeah that's a possibility the um, that's going to be a dead vill because koala hasn't reacted koala is now trying to find the fishing ships Uh, agreed, he wouldn't have anything to defend against Man at Arms spam, um, but he's not doing that at the moment. Uh, there's no Man at Arms being added, doesn't really have the food eco for it. Uh, he's hidden his fishing ships well away, uh, but he... And now it's going to be an archery range from Tim in the center of Koala's base. Koala trying to add a, a mill onto his berries as there's, uh... Archers coming across very shortly. It feels like it's not going to do too much. Especially if there's another tower in this sort of region. Okay, it's going to be there. That should deny the berries. Uh, market from Koala. Is this to... Market Blacksmith. He's going straight up to Castle Age. I don't get what that achieves. So, Tim doesn't have the galley numbers to try and fight. Uh, against Koala. So uh, it feels like he's looping around trying to find the fishing ships. It's going to hurt a bit. That should clear the landing. I... Mm, yeah, probably. Uh, Tim knows that gold's there. Why didn't he go this way? A tower over there would be nice. He does have the working fishing ships. For now. He's about to lose them. So he's now got one. And a fisherman there. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> no. So the berries are going to get denied. There's no villagers under the TC even. No. Red doesn't. But... Uh, red milled the deer in the end. So this is Koala's one defensive tower. Um, it is a hope to try and get Knights in Siege up to protect his gold. Uh, I wouldn't have even minded it a little bit further back because he needs to make sure he gets his up and wins in the uh, tower war. Yeah, that's up. No upgrades for either. No, nope. does have a blacksmith though, so could get Fletching very soon. Tim adding a market. Looks like he could be close to being able to balance his economy. Uh, bearing in mind his villagers here will be carrying a fair bit of food. Needs to make sure he drops them off and he doesn't lose the um, villagers while they're still carrying loads of food to the fire galleys. Uh, that's... That's 31 food he's just lost because he didn't drop off. And he's going to lose another 28. That's huge amounts of food. <laughs> Pet the Mundo movement. That does hurt a lot, yeah. A, a dock here I quite like. So we have a siege workshop, which is going to be a ram. <clears throat> and nice timing for Koala, as the uh, archers have dropped off, his knight is there ready. <laughs> oh, chaos is good chaos. Um, <laughs> Tim has just completely idled his economy to be able to go up. Uh, he looks to be preempting a uh, counter attack here. So he's just walling up between his base to try and secure it. <laughs> uh, Francesco, I, I feel that I shouldn't be involved in political movements. So you know, I'm prone to start random uprising discords when border upset. Oh, uh, Mundo, you would fit in excellently on mine then. 
<clears throat> uh, Brahio, yeah, it feels like he's in a better position here. He is now adding the transport ship. Uh, Rams and Knights could be scary. Oh, you're in it already. Good. Um, yeah, no, like the likes of just not fair enough. Um, yeah, the, the Lohab and Xerxes movements we've had so far uh, have been uh, squashed for the time being. But I'm sure most people are waiting for the next opportunity. Uh, yeah, so Koala is going to hold. <laughs> hey, Brevin. <laughs> oh boy. Um, Brevin, on that note, you are actually looking like you're going to win the art competition at the moment. Um, depends how much rigging I can get done in the next hour or two. The Discord is an absolutely scary place. It is. Um, so, um, Brevin, obviously you will not benefit from coaching from me in the slightest. Um, so... I, I can do that. Um, what I was also going to offer you is a best of three on stream. Because I think you'd like that more. <laughs> Mundo is in my LTX. Ah. Fair enough, Brevin. I'll do that. Thank you very much, Brevin. Okay, then I will have to consult with the poll. I can't remember who is winning. <laughs> Bro, hi, that's not what I mean. Um, but may maybe at some time, Brevin, I'll give you a best of three on stream as well, just to thank you for it. Um, why drop the monastery and not finish it? Or start it. <laughs> or, or Matox. Brevin, Brevin, fight Matox. Fight Matox. I cast. Jeez, Brevin to wall. Um, Tim looks to be in a pretty ropey position here. Matox, my Um, I wonder if you can get through three games before that. <clears throat> I'll see what I can do, Francesco. <sighs> so it's Scorpions, Rams and Knights. Not completely doomed yet. Um, may Maybe a Mangonel stops this, but... I feel that it's a matter of time. So he gets a very, very quick conversion. There is now a gap, so the knights could run through. Uh, Mangonel holds it in for now. Too risky with the knights around. Um. <laughs> I've may maybe it's possible. Um, this knight needs to stay alive for, uh, yeah, okay, that knight's dead. So the, the mangonel can pop out and stop the ram. M Monk goes down to the two knights, and there's a whole, okay, quick stone wall from Tim. Uh, I think the push is dead. Um, quick conversion again. Takes the weak one though. So, oh, the Ville being dead is is big. Um, but already there is a replacement coming across with some reinforcement knights. I imagine it will turn around then and go back for some um, more more villagers. I there's still one tower going. I'd even like to see. Um, some galleys for koala this wood line would be denied with galleys this not quite rangeable yet That's fairly even vil count though which is just baffling 
Koala Koala has six on food. Adding another TC. And that's only because he's Okay, add another TC there. I don't, I don't, the, the extra TCs don't really achieve too much at the moment because he doesn't have the food to produce. For an hour or so before work. So Cheers, Brevin. I will be here most of the day. I've got this set now, and then at 15 GMT, there's another uh, ACCM versus the Bloodless. And then 19 GMT, we have uh, Doubt versus Slam for Masters of Socotra. So I'll be on for all of those. Um. <clears throat> so lost. Yeah, Koala with water control is big. Um, I think it's a lot less important uh, in the modern water meta. Um, I think it's a lot easier to come back on water now than it may have once been. Um, yeah, Mundo, ACCM is the number one seed for a reason. He should be too strong, in my opinion. Uh, okay. This forward is going to get pushed back for now, probably. The mangonel can pop out, kill this one. It can make life difficult, but there's no um, military like follow-up. Okay, so... Did he get redemption? He has. Tim has researched redemption. And he loses his monk. Oh, so he had to delete the mangonel because the monk retargeted and it would have had a, a very fast uh, light reaction rate, uh, conversion rate, because it had already started charging. There is some knights coming around the back. Did he spot the... No, it doesn't know it's there. Um, these knights are not going to find an opportunity. They do attack buildings, so uh, Tim will get ping straight away. And some say charging doesn't work on these. Some say it does. Okay. No, I wouldn't know for sure. I'm, I'm basing my assumption on how the mechanic should work. <clears throat> okay, so Tim is trying to come back on water, adding some back docks. He's got some... Uh, fire ships, he's got a demo ship um, now things have kind of settled down, maybe Koala looking to go Imperial Age as soon as he can is this really that simple that seems very very fair Mundo um, <clears throat> I, I am a very big fan of the I think it I think it's in a very very good state overall um but obviously, oh, five HP night. No. Um, but obviously, there are issues each time. Um, so, hopefully, they'll continue uh, investing, improving, just generally working on the game. Okay, so Koala heavily investing into farming economy uh, Tim much further behind in terms of that getting fletching does fletching affect fire ships I don't think it does but maybe maybe no yeah I didn't think it did it'd be a weird up upgrade to a like effect so I don't get the yeah I don't get the fletching research okay so koala looks to be kind of investing as little as he can into water for the time being um, how close is he still quite a long way from going up he's having to add some more now as he sees Tim's uh, added navy cleans that up he's going to move around and try and stop these docks transport ship presumably to transport the monks across but he doesn't have water control so that's going to be risky Tim has stayed on stone a little bit so has Koala Koala now feeling he's in control of the water adding a lot more fishing ships 
using the one night in the north just to patrol make sure that there are no landings coming uh, so we've got sanctity coming in for Tim's monks so that'll give them a little bit extra HP does a monk push do much at this stage and like Koala doesn't have much in the way of military at his base. He does have... Uh, redemption for Tim could make life difficult. Um, particularly if he was able to land... To get over here with the monks and go for the military buildings. But where are they going to land? They're going to land right in the centre. And will it be four villagers to try and be... Five villagers to be converted initially. Um, and that will be... Castle for Tim. So <laughs> Tim jumps out with his monks, gets four conversions, forces a castle from Koala at the front, and then runs away with the monks straight away. Tim's going to run away with his converted villagers. There is scouts on the way now Tim just completely idled looks to be going for Imperial Age and the same for Koala Koala's Italians can probably afford it already um, looking at the fact that he hasn't okay he has clicked it now so it needs the conversion on the night gets deleted gets a conversion on the scout cavalry and a barracks will now go up Tim just needs to be careful. He's not using up all of his uh, conversions on villagers. Koala's going for light cav in defense. Tim, spearmen, so it'll be pike upgrade soon, and monks. Adding in more farming economy. And dropping a castle. Again, I suppose this, that's... Is he going, like, arena here? Like, not really fast imp, but, you know, monk, trebs, uh, spearman. Good reactions from Tim. Manages to... Gets no... no oh, gets one conversion. Loses three... Four monks for one conversion. Ouch. But the castle will solidify the position for the time being. Koala is pushing still on water. Uh, more monks are going across to the transport ship. That uh, light cav gets thrown away by Tim, but it gets a vil pick, and it means the castle goes up. So that will be a fairly happy position for Tim. Adding more barracks further forward. Koala adding another um, town center in a slightly defensible position. Tim, uh, Koala is first up and had a crossbowman queued up in front of a treb. So, light cav coming in. The monks healing the other monks mean that the spearmen are able to pick off the light calf uh, it is going to be pike lots of pike and uh, trebs for Tim fast fire coming in for koala um, with that he will push back all the water control monks just able to heal each other while the castle takes out the light calf Okay, first treb is out for Koala. Tim Tim struggling for the woods. So he's using all of his villagers to... Uh, all of his forward villagers that he converted to take uh, wood at the front. Koala's... Uh, Tim's treb is taking down the 
town centre, like Have Dive on the monks. The pikeman army is just not there. Um, so it feels like Tim needs more trebs out. So does Koala. Koala's only got one. Like it's important for him to push this back. Um, so he needs to take down this castle. It's going to be two trebs for Tim against just the one of Koala at the moment. Oh, second one now for Koala. And like have running into the pikemen. Over on water, fast fire is in for Koala, so he will come through all this. Is fast fire in for both, in fact? Um, but the numbers look to be in Koala's favour. Tim runs out of stone, can't repair the castle. Uh, so he needs the... This this tread was never firing at these. Like it... Tim is misplaying the monks. Should have unarmed built a box for the trebs and monks. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, like the, the, this push is dead. Um, the water control is going to go in Koala's favour. Uh, it feels like a matter of time now. Tim is going to uh, drag the game out a bit longer, though. He's still got a lot of barracks on Koala's Island. He's not making any um, pikemen from it. Because they're just completely countered by the crossbowmen. But he's built a castle on his own base, adding some docks around that. So he will try and push back again on water. Uh, galleon coming in. So he lost the back. Demo ships. And it is galleons coming out for Koala as well. Koala can't deny the docks. The docks do go up. Uh, but he's going to start trying to push back there. Uh, Treb's going to take down these barracks gradually. Koala just having a little hunt around to make sure there's no other villagers that he hasn't seen. And Tim trying to build a watchtower on the waterfront. <clears throat> so guard tower is in for Tim as well. Koala going to use his position on the water. Researching shipwright. Okay, so that reduces the wood cost of the ships. In a protracted island battle, that is very, very important. It, well, it's the technology's, is it half price or 33% off for Italians now? Either way, it's a massive thing because it's an expensive technology. On islands with the limited access to wood, it's really, really important to get that upgrade. And some big hits from demos on the left. That's completely wiped out the majority of Koala's uh, fast fires. And Treb's on the island. That will be a very good position for Koala to push from. <clears throat> Just needs to be careful of ships coming out from Tim. Hard to come back now. Yeah, it does feel like it's... Uh, starting to snowball I, I'm i inclined to agree Mundo um, that's fine it still fits in with my predictions so I'm, I'm okay with that uh, I think I have this down as 3-2 to Tim uh, but I feel like I said it could have gone either way I felt it was very close so just full on water production for both now. Um, Going to be a castle on the waterfront. Okay, here would be better, but maybe it's a bit risky to do. I suppose now, now would be an ideal time. So yeah, I don't. I'm not a big fan of that castle here. I think that just completely denies everything that Tim's trying to do at the front. Yeah, Mundo, I agree. Like. Um, I'm looking forward to casting the other set today. Um, yeah, that's a fair point. Uh, I'm looking forward to casting the other set today, but I, this one I think is a good set one. 
Um, I think the second set will be a, a, a sweep. It'll be 3 0 for ACCM. Kind of like the bit safer spot. Yeah, probably so. Shipwright is now coming in for Tim, but we see Cannon Galleon being researched from Koala. Koala is going to use his uh, naval dominance to add a few Cannon Galleons, take out the castle, take out the uh, towers on the front, take out the docks. So we've had a redock on the right hand side for Tim as well. Fast fires looping round. They're not really going to get too much in the way of value around there. Uh, so we have another castle on this island, so Koala really taking control of uh, the centre of the map. So Trebs are going to take down the uh, towers. Eventually their accuracy not great against towers, I did see one miss a second ago. The question for me now is just at what point does uh, does Tim tap out of this? Have we got is that cannon galleon coming up? Fast fires. So researches cannon galleon doesn't build any. He's got a sixty military lead. But cannon galleons are. It would be an ideal addition now, because he can just range everything. <clears throat> that is a lot of ships. That is a lot of ships, I agree. Okay, so he's waiting for Elite Cannon Galleon, which is now in uh, no production. So it's just going to be Elite Cannon Galleons, presumably. So... Drop off the trebs. Careful with that. That's risky. What's happening on the right-hand side? Um, it's just fast fires and a few galleons looping around. Um, like the numbers. Maybe they can deny a bit from over here, but as soon as that happens, the most of this will just loop back. Or maybe it'll just be a base trade for now. So. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see Koala loop back with maybe just the fast fires for now. Keep the galleons at the front. There they go. And still no cannon galleons. Doesn't really need them at this stage, so I'm not quite sure why the investment. Uh, Koala is not taking any gold. That's oh, because he's repairing the castle. Okay, uh, the castle will stay up. Galleon sit, just denying some wood access. Fast fires are coming around, and we'll get caught by koalas. Um, so Tim now using all of his fast fires and galleons that he sent forward he's just going to clean up the odd stragglers that uh, Koala had sent back and we've got some stables so it's going to be some light cav raiding for Koala Still, ships just trickling forward. I need to engage with all of these. I think if Koala just patrols in with this mass here, he cleans that up. Uh, but he's going in with everything. Oh no, he's looping around. He's going to take out the docks. Build a castle on the right-hand side. That will secure it. Uh, it feels very 105 territory. I think these the light cav that will start coming in now are going to do that. 
Um, Treb's slightly out of position. Needs to make sure that he's doing something useful with them. Uh, these fast fires are now going to clean this up. Or should do. Um, but a lot of areas to focus on. Not safe to end it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, fast fires will now clean up all of this. He can take all his wood access again. Castle there just protects uh, this section of the water. Um, did he move the trebs? Yeah, so he's moved the trebs back to a little bit safer location. He'll get attack notifications. There's no bills, yeah. <laughs> hey, Cardinal. Uh, yeah, light cav raids now start being defended by skirmishers. Skirms and pikes. Tim does have the military lead, though. I guess that's the skirmishers he's just added. Uh, yes, Wacky Chan. They are both Chinese players. Skirms are the perfect counter to light cav. Absolutely. What more do you need? <laughs> so, fast fires should be able to clear this up. There's a few pikemen being uh, raiding at the front. I don't know whether that's deliberate or whether uh, Tim is just using his select all hockey. Uh, a lot of galleons. Koala now just looping back with his. So... Cleaned up the forward navy. Might be worth using the fast fires to take out the barracks. Just to prevent any further pikeman raids. Uh, what have we got at the back? A couple of fast fires under a tower. Not really doing much. Uh, it feels... The, the, the wood is often the issue. Tim Hockey's. <laughs> hey, Boston. Uh, Aristocats, may maybe maybe Bad Koala has some uh, Australian heritage as well, but I think he plays or has played for some of the Chinese teams previously. Um. But uh, as I said, I may be wrong. I know in my prediction video the other day, I got at least one player's nationality wrong because they had. Uh, registered their first game using a VPN. Yeah, C Cardinal is Australian, so if uh, Koala was an Aussie, they would be fully claiming him so that they have a, a top, top player. and flight this to our top players. Yeah, that makes sense. And so all the barracks now have been cleaned up on Koala's Island. Tim is making light cavers as well. Um, honestly, just keep, keep water control. Adds, where are the cannon galleons? He researched it and then hasn't made any. They would be perfect now because they just clean up everything. He doesn't need the... Is that one? No, it's a galleon as well. Are they being produced? Okay, here come the cannon galleons. Good. I, I, didn't, I didn't get the point of that upgrade without... Or that research without using them. Um, Tim is very, very close to being out of wood. This is all of his wood available. Uh, he's got 5,000 banked up. So he's going to be fine, um, but gold is going to be an issue. Koala must be listening to you. Yeah, stream snipe confirmed. Like, of all the people he could cho chose to uh, listen to, I was going to be the one. <laughs> <clears throat> so how does Tim come back with no gold income? Koala's still got all of this in the center. He's secured it with his castles. And now he can just take down everything from the water. So Cammy Allen is going to take down the towers. 
Impossible SGG, yeah. Completely agree. It looks like he's trying to... I don't know what he's trying to do. He needs water control to be able to do anything. And with 111 military the Koala, almost all of that is Navy, Tim taps out. Yeah, this, this felt over for quite a while. Um, the Cannon Galleons. Ashley is casting too. Yeah, Ashley is and Mem. Um, uh, f fair enough, Aristocats. It might be that they... No, I don't know. Is there an Australia server? They might have been asking for that. But, anyway. Um, yeah, Koala does a nice job holding against the towers and then just dominating water ever since. Um, we will update the score. That was bad Koala. Taking it 2-1. <laughs> I'll take that, Lohab. I'll take that. Not quite sure I fit the description, but we'll go with it. Um, okay, I'm going to take a... <laughs> I'm going to take a two-minute break to go and grab a cup of coffee. Um... ready for when the next game starts. Uh, we're going into mission there. Okay. They've just started the next game. Excellent. Perfect timing. Cool. What do you think? Who has a draft advantage here? Um, I don't know what maps have been chosen. So we got slopes now. Um, let's see what we got. We got Huns versus Lithuanians. Um, if this was... No worries, bro. It's, um, yeah, my stepmom has gone to see her stepdad today. Um, basically been told, come, come now. Um, so yeah, sounds like it's, he's only got a day or two, which is very sad. Um, this is a best of five data. Okay. So we are up to live. Um, <clears throat> yeah, if this was even a month ago, I, Lithuanians would be favorite here quite comfortably, I would say. Um, but now with... CA being viable again. Uh, a lot of the Huns identity is suddenly back in the game. Uh, so we got... Okay, so the ponds are much smaller this year. From... Or like, less surefish from what I remember. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Cardinal. Not because of that. Um, yeah, I, I remember this having a lot more surefish. Is it because there's now deer added as well? Is it to stop it just being... Um, because it used to be a bigger pond and then deer the other side. So they've now spread it out so that it isn't just... Okay, let's go Indians. Which map is this? This is Slopes, Atten. So anyone new that doesn't know the maps... Um, that's the idea as far as Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so we got main gold, second gold, main stone, second stone. Uh, some... Neutral resources in the center. Uh, extra stone for each player. And an extra gold on either side. They also rotated this map. I feel like I've seen it in this orientation before. <clears throat> does feel a little fixed. But. I suppose... I suppose there's enough food out there that it's worth going out to. Um, surprised Mongols don't get a bit more attention here then. Mongols was banned by... Um, 
koala. Right, slightly unfortunate with Tim's first house placement there. Uh, just deny a bit of gold access. Mongols would like to be the pick for Bay still. That was the case of him. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Bay will be a heavy Mongols selection. Um, in fact, we may even see Mongols banned a lot of the time just for that. Mongols, Indians, Maya, and Spanish. Okay. So we've got pause. You misspelled pants. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> Mundo, was it even you that said that to me earlier? Or was that someone else? <laughs> oh, yeah, good. Thank you, Data. Well played. <laughs> um, Bear is actually more convenient when it comes to spelling. That's very true. So I'm just looking at some of the suggestions um, for uh, channel points. <laughs> I'll have to have a look through them properly later on. I'm going to try and focus on the casting. So we've got Mana Arms coming for Tim. Uh, needs to drop his mining camp. <clears throat> Are we going to see men at arms into archers for Lithuanians here? <laughs> so, Drush is seen by Koala. He's trying to wall into his TC. He should be able to secure enough resources if he can do so. Um... And looks like he's got enough warning to be able to get there. Uh, he only needs just a little bit in front of his berries just to secure that part. And now has barracks gone up. Although he doesn't have many villagers under the uh, town centre. So could uh, Tim could just run straight past. I love myself some good old fashioned grammar lumps. So yeah, that, there's no... Okay, so we've got a stable coming down for Koala. There's still no villagers under there. So the man at arms could have run past if Tim had seen. Um, but he might find this gap on the left-hand side. This, Koala knows about that. Why is he not gone out there? Okay, so Koala should have pulled one of his villagers and just ward that gap. He's going to use a pair of gates. Um, but the gate goes down too quickly because they have no armor anymore. Can't reliably use gates to quick wall like that. Uh, so he's now just going to try and use his scout to block this villager. Uh, I think it's already too late. Again, Tim running his early infantry under the TC. Uh quick walls come out from koala but again the palisade goes down tim's now going to be able to block this villager shouldn't get a second might be able to get another no manages to escape uh but it get so there is still a hole there and the man at arms are in with the villagers and one man at arms goes down to the scouts, so good. It, it's good in some ways for both players. Um, Tim will be very happy to have got as many villagers with that. Uh, <clears throat> Koala will be happy to have cleaned up the man at arms with so little <laughs> military losses. Uh, but yeah, down a lot of villagers already for Koala. And that all just comes from not walling this gap. 
Uh, it's a four tile gap. That didn't take long. And that, he could have just moved one villager from wood and gone back. Uh, so, slight misplay there. And all the while, Tim's economy completely untouched. Now he can just add a few spears. Uh, so we'll give him good vision. And we'll also make life very awkward for Koala's scouts. Tim hasn't even gone out to the resources on the side. Whereas Koala is already taken all of the shore fish and is now taking from the deer. Well, I can do nothing with these guys now. Just check on resources. Yeah, Koala's not on gold. Tim Tim should be up way way before. Now that everyone knows how to body box scouts, man, I've got so much better than before. Uh yeah, Mooncat the Fox, you are probably right there. Um I think Man at Arms. Maybe a pre mill rush or a man at arms are kind of top of the meta list at the moment. Like the fact that Tim, as Lithuanians, hasn't gone for early scouts is down to just how strong man at arms are. The fish may have made these scouts free. Yeah, possibly true. Um, how are we doing? Okay, so comparable food economies. Uh, but Tim, Tim has already paid for wheelbarrow. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to leave you two to your grammar discussion. I'm not engaging with that. Uh, I'm a math teacher. I'm not. I'm not touching grammar and language. Um, as a teacher of the deaf, I sh probably should be a bit more in tune with it than I am um, but yeah no, tag, tag me out okay so Tim should be on his way to Castle Edge very very soon Koala a little bit behind Koala's already added an archery range <laughs> cheers Loha good work so there's going to be two ranges for now Needs a few more vills on gold if he's going to go for cav archers. Uh, maybe he'll move some across from particularly the berries because they're about to run out. Uh, a couple of the farmers can go across. So 20% difference. Uh, three ranges. It still needs more than five on gold for that. Um, scouts not getting any damage. Just looking to see what uh, Tim is aiming for here. Only one stable at the moment, adding armor for uh, his cavalry, so it will likely be a second stable somewhere. There it is, ready for knights. <clears throat> okay, now Koala's up to seven on gold. Uh, I'm, I'm not experienced enough myself with Hun Wars. Uh, I feel like seven is still too few. Uh, it is, and here we go. We got three more coming across for Koala, adding a second mining camp. So, with Hans being able to get to where's Baskets when you need him, I reckon Bro Hio would have that knowledge as well if he's still around. Brevin would too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very true. Um, I think the last time I played uh, Brohio was in a little uh, round robin tournament we were doing. Uh, and he went... I, I was a few hundred lower ranked at the time. Uh, and uh, he went... Bulgarian man at arms into scouts against me and it just completely destroyed everything I had. It was horrible. That was before they got their like uh, discounted blacksmith techs and everything. Okay, so we got three range CA production versus two range knight production. 
Uh, monastery all ready for Tim. With a villager sneaking his way forward. Not there. Scout trying to just cause issues on the left. No bloodlines for Tim. That's that's a miss. Yeah, I. Whether Tim just forgot about it. Okay, he's got it queued up now. That's fine. Um. What was that forward villager doing? He's needs to make sure that that's not seen by the scouts. I don't know what it's going forward for, um, but he doesn't want to be seen there. So Koala just playing very, very passively, waiting for the uh, cross CA mass to build up, uh, using a weak scout to defend the uh, relic on the one side. Nearly got... A one of the relics, but that was killed just before it got in. Has Tim scouted the relics? Uh, I don't know whether he has, but it looks like it's a standard um, placement, so doesn't need to. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say husbandry is absolutely needed here. Um, it's why Teutons have kind of fallen out of favour at the moment in... Uh, Arabia with CA resurgent the lack of husbandry is just huge need to always just win the full constellation and so CA get one vil, run away could take a shot on the hill but more likely just going to run keep the mass alive so they are still faster than knights, if they both have husbandry, I believe. Um, Bloodline's on the way now for Koala. Where did that second group go? Okay, so he's got another small group collecting. He doesn't have husbandry. Okay, so they're comfortably faster. Let's just double check. Oh yeah, he did get it. I wouldn't have thought non-husbandry CA could outrun. Uh, it does have a university, so presumably ballistics already in. Nope. <laughs> Not looking at those shots. Just one defense upgrade for now. Second one coming in for Tim. And that's what the villager was for. He's built a siege workshop forward. Uh, I think the issue on the hill was like the pathing more than anything. But yeah, that is now getting to be a scary mass of CA. Uh, ballistics is on the way. Koala has just stayed on one TC for the time being. Tim might be out. Um, I think he's okay for the time being. We got some good good kills there on the CA numbers. Forward siege workshop idols the wood line. Mm, not a, not not really enough damage. I might I might have preferred some rams. Hmm. It's better eco too. Yeah, he's got a 13 vil lead. Um, Koala adding a, couple, uh, a few knights. So the knight's going to come around to try and take out the mangonels. Just need to find a way to deal with CA. Yeah. Terms and Zico is better. Yeah. Manages to take out the knight that was trying to snipe the mangonel, which then goes down to the CA mass. And so now Tim is just going to run back with his knights. He's got a small mass gathering back at his base. Um, what was that? Mangonel. 
Adding a third town centre on the wood line on the right. I might have liked that as an opportunity to come out here onto the main wood access. Because um, this will run out fairly quickly and still rangeable by CA. No worries, Theo. A hospital. Hope everything's okay. It's just an echo of my arm. Okay. But yeah, hope, hope things go okay and hope to see you back later on. <clears throat> so, what does Tim do from here? His eco is much stronger. Military numbers are 22 to 34. I've read that as a 1 for a second. Um, so, yeah, they're in favour of Koala. But is Tim in a position to... Okay, so Tim was trying to take the relic that was at the front. Uh, gets picked off by a knight from Koala. Tim now heading home. Just massing up his knights again. Added a third stable, so just going to try and keep his knight numbers as high as possible. Maybe if he gets to a one-to-one -one stage, he might be able to dive on this. Uh, CA were looking for that forward villager, but don't quite find it. Dive on, take a few shots from the TC. Okay, Koala has expanded to that wood line into the gold. I don't remember how this map played out in Hidden Cup 3. I think Indians Indians were the strong pick because of the uh, shorefish. Um, but I think Indian CA was something we saw quite a bit. That's a pretty good engagement for Tim there. Picking off a lot of CA for the swap of oh, three knights, is that? Maybe fourth now. Tim trying to get this around. That's also had a good match with the Incaville Rush. Oh, okay. Hey, the ghost. Tim reading this right. Yeah. Yeah. In in a second, he'll realise that the ball is growing and just run back with his knights again. We'll see how last year, and we'll see how still be strong here. Right? Uh, I feel so. Yeah. I think Indian CA would be absolutely fine on this. Tatar's also a good shout. That's not a great engagement for Tim this time, though. Although he's running around with knights on the other side. Getting the surround is really helpful. He's clearing up the knight at the front, ready so that his mangonel can pop out. Down for the set, I think, right? Um, who is banned? Uh, Indians got sniped. So, yeah. This was probably the planned map for Indians, as you say. <clears throat> 15 against... Okay, so... If Tim can keep up his production, he should be able to keep pushing back. He's got three queued up in each stables and enough wood for another one. So maybe it would be better for him to add more production buildings to get his numbers back up. <laughs> Koala getting the snipe again on the monk heading back. Lost in Cup 3 there. They've been nerfed, but not sure. Uh, yes, they did get that nerf after Hidden Cup 3. Um... I think I think they'd still be strong enough on this map with the shorefish, um, but then again, the shorefish is only 400 food. Nice. I suppose that's like having an extra boar, so you, you'd take that as a <laughs> Tim trying to get an attack ground on the villagers only hits his own knight, so he will now lose the mangonel to uh, koala's knights. And this looks like a castle coming up here for Tim. Right in front of Koala's TC. Koala has gone to stone, but only recently. Only four villagers there. So he's not going to be able to do a counter tower. He's going to try and use his CA to pick off the villagers. Uh, so he's going to lose a lot of CA. But Tim will lose quite a few villagers to this. I think there's probably enough villagers that this should go up still. Yeah, it will do. Um, that 
looks like a good position for Tim to then push from. Going to take down a couple of the stables. I think we lose this. It's massive CAs and castle still up. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> so we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so we can take this side of the gold, okay. Uh, knights diving in, taking out the CA. That's almost all of the original mass cleaned up, but reinforcements coming in. Uh, that's all of the CA basically cleaned up. This is feels like basically GG now. 24 military versus 5. Reinforcements still gathering for Tim. Uh, yeah, GG is called. <coughs> Where Castle, Castle did the trick. Forced the engagement. Koala lost his mass. Tim got the castle up anyway. Um, yeah, so we get game five. So at the very least, my score prediction is right. Whether I get the outcome right or not, I don't know yet. Um, okay. Okay. If you have better eco trade units, equals good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't know whether... I don't know how it plays out if Koala just ignores that castle going up, doesn't take that fight, just focuses on keeping his mass alive. Because that, I feel, was the most important thing. As that started to drop, that spelt the end. Right, into mission. So we've got scoreboard 2-2. Two, two. Um, okay, let's try and find the next game. <clears throat> I don't know what the map is, as I said. Uh, uh, yeah, Brahio, all live. And then in 50 minutes, we've got ACCM versus the Bloodless. That's another qualifier. Uh, so we have game five on hideout. Just fast forward a little bit. Okay, so we got game five here of Hidden Cup 4 qualifiers. Very first Hidden Cup 4 qualifier uh, between Bad Koala in the blue as Khmer against Tim in the red as Cumans. Uh, hideout. Start with a small wall off with Palisades uh, around a central wood line. Uh, the players are actually very close here. Um, so definitely laming potential if... Tim were to go forward straight away, but I, he looks to be sending one of his pigs out to just keep the gate open so they can push his deer in. <clears throat> um, I would agree this is likely to be Khmer's game here. Uh, Stefan, yes, I will be casting uh, ACCM versus the Bloodless after this, uh, and then I will also do Doubt versus Slam in Masters of Scotra this evening. Uh, okay, so looking at the bases, both have a gold and a stone inside their walls. Gold and a stone outside, another gold over there. There's a few extra gold dotted around the map. Roughly two each. Yeah, so they have a two forward golds each. Uh, and two additional golds. Um, stone, they've got their main one inside their walls. Uh, one, uh, uh, The second one there. Second one there. And Mrs. BR has just brought me a cup of coffee. She is wonderful. Thank you, darling. <laughs> and she curtsies as she does so. Excellent service here. Highly recommend. <clears throat> okay, so we've got a few extra stones dotted around the map as well. Relics, fairly even distributed. Uh, one central, two on each side. I wouldn't 
Well, who's Tim? Tim is Cummins. Okay, so Tim presumably will be adding second TC. Uh, it's Cummins' only real economy upgrade, or economy bonus, I should say, rather than upgrade. Um, the other option he could go for, and what wouldn't surprise me based on what we've seen so far, is some form <laughs> only. <laughs> it is! It's the only economy related bonus they have. Um, and it's it's a risky bonus to go with. Um, Cumans, when they first came out, were insanely overpowered. Uh, Kip tracks were super strong, and Step Lancers were super strong, and. <laughs> And they were able to build their second TC at the start of Feudal Age. Um, but when it first came out, it built normal pace. So it was it, it crazy strong. Um, now they have rebalanced it so it takes a bit longer. <clears throat> um, so it... it if you can get it up and can stay safe, it is definitely worth doing. But if he's under early pressure, it's going to be difficult. <laughs> plus 15 versus not plus 50. Uh, yeah, I think on hideout, it will work very, very well, Mooncat. Um, on on more open maps, it, it's really risky because of forward pressure. Forward siege, and you're in quite a lot of trouble. Uh, I recently was doing some practice games against a much higher player than me and they came forward and dropped to castle and I, I just had no no response to it here because of the walls around um should be okay what i think tim's going to go for and it's now reinforced by him going out to stone i think we're going to see some towers and uh, a feudal age siege workshop which is another bonus of the uh cumans uh yes Stefan. both of these are uh chinese players uh, tim tim certainly has been around a very long time uh i don't know so much about koala in terms of his longevity in the game uh, but i think he's been around for quite a while <clears throat> Yeah, with with Koala on stone, I, I feel this is almost certainly... He's on gold as well? Yeah, so that's to afford the siege. He's going to come forward. It's going to be towers and siege workshop. He was qualified for the conference. Um, this is the very, very first game of the qualifiers, Stefan. Nice engagement from Koala here. Diving out with his scout while he is... Feudal Age and Tim still in Dark Age. Scouts get uh, plus two attack when they reach Feudal Age. So, uh, so yeah, there were eight given automatic qualification, um, and then basically the next sixty-four that registered at the time of uh, Koala is fast castling probably four knights. Not the ladder. Uh, yeah, so you had to register, and then it was the top 64 from the ladder that got in. Okay, so it is a market blacksmith. So he's just... This is straight FC. Tim's going straight FC, castle, drop for Kip Tracks. Send a couple more to stone. He's got the food, he's got the gold. So. No worries, Stefan. Happy to help. This could catch Koala out. Uh, yes. Although his scout is fairly active, he'll see the villagers on stone, he'll see the market, he'll know that this is um, castle. He'll probably have even seen the score drop 
players at this level know to watch for that. Um, how far can we see that? Also, the uptime gave away. Yeah. Uh, normally, if you're going for the instant second TC, you go up on about, I think players are doing it 18 or 19 pop now. Um, super early. You want your first field if it was TTC. Yeah, true. No, he would be, sorry. Yeah, probably 18 on hideout. Yeah, you'd probably go 18 and even skip loom. So yeah, it, it it would be insanely fast. You'd probably have that second TC up before like ten minutes in. So we got two town centers for Bad Koala as well. He's still going three TC. So Tim started construction on his second TC while he's still in feudal age, uh, using five villagers. I don't know whether it speeds up again. Data, I'm not good enough at my builds to be able to tell you if it's possible. Um, but I'm almost certain I've seen at least a 19 pop with no loom on like Arena. And I would assume the top players can just about manage to go 18 pop. Um, by taking straggler trees rather than a lumber camp. Feels like that did speed up, but I don't know. It is possible, especially with deer pushing. Yeah, makes sense. Don't go for a lumber camp. Stay on straggler trees and go with deer pushing. That should be all right. What business do you go then? Um, that's a good point. <laughs> Very good point. Because you don't go berries either. Um, I would presume you would go berries and... I don't know what your second building would be. Maybe you have to go lumber camp. Yeah, Mundo, I've seen it with two on wood as well. Uh, so it must have been a lumber camp with two on wood ready for the... Um, because you need the two buildings to go up, obviously. Uh, Stefan, can you say something about the map Bay? Uh, yes, we casted it earlier. It was a it's, a... it's a fun map. I really like it. Um, the balance between the water and land. Uh, I expect to see Mongols banned almost every time on that one. Uh, weirdly, earlier we saw Slavs versus Malay. Malay I kind of get as a balance between land and water. Um, Slavs was a weird one, especially for the strategy Tim went with. Um, <clears throat> but it it seems like it's in quite a good state at the moment. I hope that we can see it in a variety of uh, orientations, um, just so that players have to scout at least a little bit. Um, we should see some fun matchups there. So. Koala pops out with his scorpions, gets a uh, Kipchak kill before Tim can react. Hmm. I don't particularly like the way that either of them has played this so far. Um, uh, Koala's approach is slightly better in my eyes. He's going to have a much more stable... Uh, economy got sevenville lead getting housed now doesn't help though um is the water there so important or can you ignore um it's it's a big boost um i if i was playing it myself and i'm nowhere near the level of these players uh, i would say um that it is fully worth going for the water um but it's not the end of the world if you lose it because there's plenty of other food sources around the map um, but that boost of not the additional food income without having villagers dedicated to it is really big because then your villagers are able to do something else nice catch here from Tim finds the walling villager from Koala just going to get a bit closer 
Uh, yeah, De Gaulle, so that's, I, kind, I kind of agree with that. You don't want your opponent to have completely uncontested because then they have the um, food income while their villagers are still able to do other stuff. But it's still one that will kind of trail off in the game because there's not that much food there. Yeah, there's there's a balance to it. Um, I don't feel the way that um, Tim played it last time is going to be favourable. Um, I think if Tim had added his own fishing ships as well, it would make sense. Uh, but he seemed to want to go up really fast, ready for his towers. <clears throat> I'll just demo the opponent of fishing ships. Yeah. Yeah, make, add a couple of galleys and go and snipe them. Two galleys can snipe fishing ships pretty well. Uh, Tim needs to react here and use the mango on the scorpions. Uh, no, he's, that's like two shots away from being dead. So... Both players just booming for the time being. Okay. Uh, Koala is going to add a tower at the front, uh, castle at the front, which will keep that safe. Second castle is important. Who's second castle? Uh, yep, yeah, we agree. Kites and relics, very important. I uh, wouldn't even mind seeing Tim come and try into wall on this map. With Koala getting the castle up, it, his push is going to stall. Um, so use that as your opportunity to take as much as you can from this side, wall up just for when eventually you get pushed back. Forward walls and sides are so good. Yeah. <clears throat> Treat it like Oasis, really, isn't it? At the very least, you want warning of when your opponent's coming forward that side. <clears throat> so, Koala now adding Light Cav, getting his scout upgrades. Bloodline's, Bloodline's already in. No, it hasn't. <coughs> no, Bloodline's not in yet. Uh, no attack or defense upgrades. Tim's just going to come and sit on this hill. That's a really nice spot. Um, just needs to keep the Kipchaks alive to snipe any light cav that come in. Uh, but these mangonels should now have a hill bonus. That's really nasty. Uh, and it's a forward stables for Tim. He's coming forward with those. He's got the stone. It's going to be a castle on there. Unless he puts it here to deny these. But I think they're already pretty much denied. I think that's going to be a castle. And with a the castle there, it's going to be really awkward for Koala to push back. He's going to need a faster Imperial Age. Uh, but at the moment, he's investing into Lycav. I suppose 38 Khmer farmers. He could just stop production. Completely. <clears throat> Where are they? Yeah, they're just looping around. Building a house over here. He gets up in a minute if he wants it. Yeah, he would. I think as soon as he sees that castle go being placed, that's what's going to happen. Ooh, good call on the blister elephant. Well spotted, Mundo. Uh, yep, yeah, so Stefan, this is what you wanted. We're going to see the elephant chop through here now. Um, they, I believe they were bugged on D before. Um, I don't get quite why you wouldn't put that right on top of the hill. Uh, yeah, this will be huge. <clears throat> what does he have to defend it? He's adding knights at the front. The villagers are going to get cleaned up. Mangonel's gone down. Uh, scorpion behind. This is massive from Koala. He's going to clear up all the villagers. And then these light cav can almost just ignore the Kipchaks now. And go back here ready to run through the center. Uh, that's true. Hmm. 
And that that was a lot of bills that Tim just lost there. Um, the oh, the elephant's gone forward. Is it trying to shoot the villagers? Let's try and do everything possible to cockroach there. Yeah. So, Koala is up to the Imperial Age. Where? Okay, so he's building the castle there instead. Does he know about this attempt? He doesn't. It's all the way through. Where are the light cav? Okay, so they're fighting Kipchaks at the front while Koala adds his own castle there. And now these light cav will be able to turn around and come back and just run straight through. <clears throat> He might spot it. Because that castle, if that was here, that stops that plan straight, straight away. Yeah, it has a nose, but could see. And the light cavern now coming back. This... Tim's reaction depends on whether this is the game over. Here they come. He's splitting his light cav up, going straight across to the gold, heading through the lumber camp. Okay, so he's brought his villas back pretty quickly. Wouldn't mind a quick house wall or something, even palisades. <clears throat> uh, he's going to lose a lot of villagers to this. Uh, just before he transitioned, yeah. So that's all of his lumberjacks, all of his um, farmers idled, losing a lot to this raid. And Koala's just keeping it open. He's flooding like have through still. He's even come forward and built stables. He lost his villagers to the Kipchaks. Take out the ballista. Doesn't need to, the TC will do it. Um, but there's more here. The siege is now working its way across. Right, Kiptracks should now push this back for the time being. <clears throat> 16 vil lead for Koala. Uh, he's got gold access still. The scorpions now here, rams coming through, more blister elephants, and trebs are on their way here as well, I expect. Might choose to go forward with them instead, but I think they would be more beneficial here. Uh, Kipchaks do not do well against the elephants. Rams trying to take down the university. The university will go down before chemistry completes. Chemistry takes a very, very long time to research. Uh, this is this is looking very rough for Tim. This is good entertainment. Thank you very much, Stefan. I'm glad that's the case. I hope that people can enjoy it, stick around during uh, the day while we've got this early stream. <laughs> hey, Turf. Host T90, please. I'm planning to be here all afternoon, Turf. Is T90 even streaming? Or just as a general rule, you want me to? <laughs> uh, yeah, like, Ballista Elephants make complete sense here. The Kiptracks are doing awful against them. Ah, he's not. Kipchaks are going to get completely cleaned up. This, this, this is well and truly over. He's going to lose the castle at the front, but there's no military follow-up for Tim. A few Kipchaks here, but there's enough light cav. This is this is done. <laughs> light cav are going to break their way out of the palisades. They're going to, there's so many villagers exposed there um, and this is going to be game one JBR nil I like my predictions straight out the window from the start 
I have a good feeling about hitting a four. Yeah, I, I really like it as a tournament format. I think it's provides a lot of excitement, a lot of entertainment. The thing is, Tim's resources are still looking okay. So like, he's lost most of his base, but there's not, there's no gold, no stone left in there. Oh, like there's a little bit here, like five, uh, three hundred gold. Uh, okay, losing this TC will be big. Rams and Trebs are just going to push everything back there, but he can keep expanding around this side. Then there's no reason for him to tap out just yet. Um, he's added monks to convert the elephant, the ballista elephants. Yeah, I get that, Mundo. But I, I kind of like the fact that it's p people are unknown. Um, I do plan to do some videos over the next month of the players and uh, like a little bit of their playstyles, because there's there's a few features I I know about that um, are pretty common to players. Um, so like the way that Viper builds his farms perfectly around his TCs. Certainly the first eight are always perfectly placed. Um, so I'll be highlighting that. And um, Dugao will leave a one tile gap between his mill and his berries. So they can quick wall it. Um, <clears throat> there's enough Kipchaks here that the siege will go down. The TC dies. But uh, Tim lacking the wood. So he needs at least a lumber camp here for the time being. Has Tim helped? No, there's too many light calf coming. The production for Koala is just fantastic here. We don't have more viewers. Good cast. <laughs> Cheers, Stefan. I'm still fairly new to things, so uh, let's assume it's because I'm new and not because I'm a plebcaster. Um. <clears throat> the memes around him in 2019 were peak content. Yeah, they were. No, uh, MBL doesn't particularly lane boards in uh, tournament games. I still only old lane in Fame and Masters final. True. And that's it. My my very first uh, Hidden Cup Four qualifier game uh, ends with me being wrong. Um, I fully expect that to be a common theme across this. Uh, qualification phase. <clears throat> Great opening set. Why don't name NBL? Uh, NBL will lame in uh, ranked games. He doesn't tend to do it in tournaments. Uh, there's a bit more randomness to it. If you try to lame and fail, it it goes quite badly against you. The the scouting information is way more important, and especially now that you can't palisade scan, I think that will be. Um, an even bigger factor discouraging it. So the last few so we stopped. What was that? Is it the small tolerance of life and such? Yeah. I I've had a few compliments of my voice lately and I'm very appreciative of it and I'm even considering uh like putting myself on Fiverr to do narration or something. <laughs> someone gives me something to read out for a bit of money that sounds quite nice um yeah koala's played this one excellently the ballista elephant cut <laughs> humble brag <laughs> absolutely degust um yeah the ballista elephant cut through the center was really nice held this position in uh mid castle age and then counter raid on the way to imperial age uh, it was huge uh, uh, yeah, Mundo, I remember that one. That was mental. Um, Hincap would be Larian Viper in final. <clears throat> uh, Degost, I am now going to go. Well, I'm going to have a two minute break to run to the loo, etc. <laughs> Shane, I I'll stick to Fiverr for now, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take a two minute break in a second. Uh, and then we will be casting the 
uh, next set between ACCM and the Bloodness. Uh, yeah, that's also true. I think I think Viper and Leary should be amongst the favourites for it, regardless of that. Um, may, maybe less so the Viper at the moment. He's not had amazing tournament performance of late. Um, I'm I'm still a very big fan, uh, still a very big fan of the Viper. So um, I think settings favour Viper a lot. Maybe, maybe. <clears throat> we shall see. I, I, it's, I'm hoping that it's going to be a very fun tournament anyway. And I'm excited to be a part of it, even if it's in my own very small way. Uh, yeah, that's true. Degost, he does that almost every time, doesn't he? Does shine on mixed maps. Yeah. <laughs> Shane, 20 quid is 20 quid. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, boy. First round isn't random. Uh, yes, Stefan, in, um, the qualifiers are not, the qualifiers are seeded, but when it gets through to the main event, uh, it's completely random, as far as I'm aware. <clears throat> 